We are joined by Rick Perry, the United States Secretary of Energy. Secretary Perry is at the Oak Ridge National Labs uh, in Tennessee with some news to share. Uh, but first, we have to ask you um, about what's going on in the Middle East, the uncertainty in Venezuela, uh, uh, oil market uh, stability. You didn't know you had to be a, uh, a, a computer programmer, a, a nuclear physicist, and a secretary of state all at the same time, I think, uh, Mr. Secretary. You've got to be a real renaissance man. Well, they, they don't call it the Department of Everything for nothing. So uh, DOE is uh, the most fascinating place in the world, to say the least. So uh, we're here at Oak Ridge today to uh, kick off X Lab. As you can see over here, the, uh, uh, the different companies that we're working with, Cray and AMD, are our partners on uh, some advanced manufacturing that I'm going to show you in a little bit. But uh, we don't have enough time uh, to talk about all of the really fascinating things that are going on. Uh, you brought up uh, what's going on in the Middle East, the, uh, uh, the challenges that are there, uh, making sure that we have a market, uh, a global market. And, uh, you know, our, our partners, if you will, uh, our allies, uh, Saudi Arabia, for instance, uh, they're uh, increasing their production to, to meet these, these needs uh, relative to the, uh, uh, the Iran uh, sanctions. So uh, the, 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 the fact is, the United States is in this incredibly unique position now that we didn't find ourselves in for the last uh, 50, 60 years. Uh, we're the number one oil and gas producing country in the world. Uh, we are uh, just about to be a net energy exporter just within a few months of that occurring. So the, the challenges that we have are good challenges, uh, whether it's on uh, the side of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, all of this work that's being done here at Oak Ridge National Lab, or whether it's in building the infrastructure that we need uh, to continue to supply the world with this insatiable appetite of uh, American energy, particularly liquefied natural gas. It was like a year since we exited the deal, the Iran deal. Then we did the, the most recent thing where, you know, we're going to penalize anyone that doesn't uh, play along with us in terms of the embargo in yeah. Iran. And next thing you know, Israel apparently informed us that our troops were in danger. And also we had the, the what's happening in Gaza and, and the renewed tensions there. It looks like Iran is behind all of this. And I just wonder geopolitically and, and even for financial markets whether we're factoring in, uh, it's not a black swan, but that's certainly uh, certainly something that, that is not maybe on our radar screens to the extent that it should be. And, and it, it seems like it could get worse quickly. Yeah, well, obviously uh, what Secretary Pompeo is doing, the other uh, members, John Bolton, members of the National Security Council, of which the Department of uh, the Secretary of Energy also sits upon that, uh, we're keeping a close eye upon all the challenges that we have. Uh, but our, our real focus, uh, not taking our eye off the ball with uh, Iran and what they're doing, uh, their support of terrorism, et cetera, uh, and, and clearly the smart message for uh, all of our uh, friends and allies around the world is don't do business with these people. They're, until they understand uh, that there is a way that you conduct yourself in, in the global uh, community, uh, you, we're not doing business with you. And we don't expect our friends to do business with them. So it's, a, uh, it's the right message. It's a strong message. But while that's going on, making sure that the United States has the infrastructure in place, it's one of the reasons that uh, having uh, a, a FERC uh, fully uh, functioning and, 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 and getting these permits done, uh, the Department of Energy obviously is very speedy in getting our uh, permitting done for infrastructure that's to be put into place, whether it's an LNG export facility or whether it's a pipeline uh, that, uh, that FERC is overseeing. All of that together is part of a plan that the United States is putting into place to continue to be the dominant energy supplier for the world. I Just back from, from Europe, I was over in Brussels meeting with my counterparts in the European Union, and the desire to purchase American LNG obviously has never been higher. Our ability to be able to put that into place to counter the Russian gas that's uh, yeah. uh, over on the eastern side of Europe and, and the s stability uh, of that market for these Europeans. You know, ask the Ukrainians what you think about uh, Russian gas and they'll tell you uh, it may be, a, may be a little cheaper, but what's the cost yeah. in the long that's run? 
of your energy security. Just real quickly, I mean, uh, 50 times faster this, this computer is going yep. to be by 2021. And I, I, we, we don't have enough zeros really to figure this out. A billion, billion <laughs> calculations yeah. per second. Yeah. A billion, billion calculations yeah. per second. But it's got uses not just for energy, but for, for genetics and for, uh, for health care and for predicting uh, uh, weather events uh, and, and so many different things. And we will be, this will be the, the leader in the world, and it's AI. And this brings back our, our rivalry with China because they, they're behind now in AI, uh, but they certainly uh, look like they, they would like to either catch up or, or pass us. And this, this might keep us ahead, right? Yeah, you're spot on. Uh, this computer that's uh, named Frontier, and again, uh, AMD and Cray are our partners in this. Uh, you said it, a billion, billion uh, movements a, a second. That's a quintillion. I mean, it, it's beyond uh, the, the, the human mind to really get your, uh, your, your grasp of that, if you will. But the, the speed of which these calculations are being done is what the power of this exascale computer. Uh, we announced one up in Argonne uh, a couple of months ago. This one now at Oak Ridge. Lawrence Livermore will have one. Uh, that's that's coming on board. Uh, America has five of the ten fastest supercomputers in the world. The two fastest ones belong to Oak Ridge uh, and to Lawrence Livermore. I mean, th this is some fascinating uh, uh, equipment that basically is putting us on the leading edge when it comes to, you know, medical research is a great example of it. We're in a partnership with the University of California, San Francisco, uh, on a traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, uh, concussions. Uh, we're uh, we're, we're talking to uh, a number of groups about uh, working with us on the concussion side of things and, and I mean, just a broad band. When you think about artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, we obviously got in the business back after the testing of nuclear weapons and we needed the ability to, to do this uh, to replace the underground testing so that we could keep up with that. Right. Now the application across the board. Uh, whether it's in applied, I mean, this is the core for a, uh, a, a reactor, a nuclear reactor, a micro reactor. This is the core. This thing was made uh, here at the lab uh, with uh, 3D printing. And speaking of 3D printing, check out that Cobra right there. Uh, they built this at Oak Ridge National Lab. And then, of course, my favorite's right over here, this uh, front end loader. Uh, it, it was built with machine learning, uh, a computer, and, and 3D printing. Now, if I had to take my choice, obviously I take the. Give me the crawler with that's the your, uh, front end your, loader. A, but that's your A and M. Not, uh, not with A and trading agriculture. That Texas A and M. <laughs> that's a, that's right. the living. Your Aggie. That's the living in Round Top, Texas, right now. I'm needing that right now to, right. to do a little bit of road work. But anyway, long story short, fascinating work that is going on at our national labs, all across 17 national labs. The most incredibly talented, gifted scientists and technicians in the world working with the fastest computers in the world. That is a formula for success. And Muhammad, I, computer might be smarter than you, Muhammad, maybe. I don't so know. Secretary Perry, um, going back to <laughs> energy prices, the U.S. is increasingly viewed as the swing producer because of shale. As prices go up, more shale production comes in. As, as prices go down, less shale production. How sensitive is shale in? And do you see us trading in a narrower band or not in terms of price? Well, I, I try to stay away from the, the price side of it. I'm more into the stability side of it. And, and the key from my perspective is the United States continuing to build out the infrastructure. For instance, removing the associated gas from the Permian Basin is going to allow it to continue to be a major, major producer of crude. Making sure that you have the pipelines, that you have the LNG uh, export facilities, and that you have the market around the world for that gas that's got to be taken off of the, uh, the, the Permian Basin for that uh, uh, example that I used, so that you can continue to produce the crude to keep the stability in the market and obviously the price at a reasonable level. Hey, Secretary Perry, before we let you go, uh, I'll let you say it to the camera yourself, because I, th I think that uh, your spokesman may have denied it, but there was a report two weeks ago uh, that suggested you were considering stepping down from your role. I, you know, I told somebody the other day, I've been, um, I think uh, the VA job was one I was headed to. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security was one I was headed to. I think DOD's been uh, uh, in the mix from time to time. Um, 
I got the greatest job in, in the government here working at DOE. I'm a day closer to the day I go back to Round Top, Texas, I will tell you that. But it ain't today and it ain't tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Secretary Perry, uh, thank you. Other things, uh, we, uh, really, I mean, you do need, uh, you're all over the place, but we don't have enough time. We hope to see you again and have you back. I think I might, what, do you, what would I use the front end loader for? I, I might take the car. I think. Wouldn't you, Sorkin? Uh, hey, Joe, I'm telling you, the, the predictive work that these computers do, as a matter of fact, I asked them to give me a little prediction uh, before I walked in or getting ready for the show, and the prediction was that you're probably not ever going to wear a coat on TV. <laughs> you got the, you know what, when I interview uh, the president, I wore one, I, I did, and the vice president. Good uh, for I you. I wore one, but that's it. Good Below for you. Below that, it's uh, no coat. Take anyway, a picture uh, of that. Send it to me. All right.